Oh, yes. It's like probably quarter past eight and Gerard is not awake yet. So we have a little surprise for him. 300 WSM without the suppressor. It's going to be good. I'm going to have to put my some hearing protection in. Oh, uh, going for a walk. But we have to do it anyway now. <laughs> just heard a three hundred going off. <laughs> Had my little bit of a solo safari this morning just to check out where the monkeys is at the water. They went that way. We'll get them later. We will. Yep. Look at Luke's clothing today. He's got his two-tone khaki <laughs> from the bush belt and he's got his board but, uh, short stuff. Half beach, half farm. Because <laughs> yeah. that's how we do it. <laughs> Always have this like visions okay. of baboons climbing on my tent. <laughs> sticking a rifle against the canvas. <laughs> Cheers, Lucky. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Just like uh, being here with you guys. Yeah. We'll see fun. you next time. It was awesome yeah. meeting you. It was. it was a blast. Always make sure your kids are buckled in. <laughs> Well, it's been a bit of a slow start to the morning, but Gerard and I are ready to hit the gas and make the most of the day. Our primary target today is the monkeys. They are probably the biggest problem on this farm alongside baboons. And just to clarify, the laws of our province allow us to shoot as many as we want. No restrictions on bag limit or hunting seasons. Unfortunately for us though, the monkeys are energetic little buggers and they don't like to keep still. Man, these monkeys are so sneaky. Um, we had one or two of them actually lined up on the scope. Um, but they know now, they know that if they're moving, they're safe. If they're sitting up in a tree in open visibility, they're not safe. So they hide very well and they don't stop betwe running between trees. So it makes it very difficult for us. We stopped here where they're feeding the, the goats. The monkeys come out here and they raid the feed and so do the baboons. I have a feeling we're not going to have too many shots on camera at the monkeys with the air gun. That's just the way it goes. So it's going to have to be the 22 to 50 for the air gun most of the time. So we can get distance on them. But I think let's take a drive down to the ground school area and see if we can get a few ground schools. <laughs> well, on our way to look for ground squirrels, things finally start to turn in our favor as we find ourselves getting a few opportunities on monkeys from close with the air guns. We've got two impacts with 600mm and 700mm barrels, both in 22 caliber, but it's the big boy, the 700, that gets the opportunity first. Good night, Charlie. Headshot. There we go. Perfect headshot. You see the blood running from the head. 34 grain slug, did a perfect job. I have shot with the impact now and it is fitted with a new power plane from FX and this gun is running 34 grain slugs at a thousand feet per second and this is awesome because now you can achieve this power with this gun without ex extra modifications. This is a standard gun, rack pressure about 160 bar on this now, hammer spring on 5, I've got a 700 slug barrel on here and absolutely smoke this monkey, it's just, you don't need anything more than that so the gun did a perfect job exactly what I wanted and uh, we'll see if we can open up the monkey and just get that slug out so we can show you guys a bit. Right so this is awesome we actually just recovered the slug from the monkey it's opened up mushroomed and it's almost flattened out completely so it's the soft lead doing its job opening up um, the slug obviously hit the monkey in the bone and flesh as well and opened up nicely that's what you want and dumped all its energy you know the fact that you're not penetrating more than this, but you're dumping 75 foot pounds in that space. Um, that's what you want in a hunting projectile. So we're really, really happy with that. And I'm going to keep this as a little memento. <laughs> it feels really good to finally get some air gun action. So we stick to the thick bush, trying to get some more opportunities from close. 
it's super difficult though because the closer you are the more fidgety the monkeys get and if you don't take your split second opportunity you miss it we see plenty of monkeys but only a handful of them actually give us opportunities this one's hard to see but Gerard makes no mistake And here's one that I just narrowly missed with my shorter impact. I was trying to weave the slug through the fence and just pulled it to the left. This one though is not so lucky. He cops one right in the vitals from super close and it's an early retirement for him. With the sun starting to beat down, we decided to take a break from the monkey bashing and head to the Great Fish River for a dip. You'll see that the river provides somewhat of an oasis in the horrible drought and that's partly because the river connects to a massive dam a few hundred kilometers north. The Gharib Dam holds more than 5 million megaliters and is fed from South Africa's biggest river, the Orange River. The dam provides hydroelectric power but in 1966 a tunnel was dug from the dam to the source of the fish river to help provide flow for the farmers in the area during droughts. It's because of this that many farmers in the area have access to this water even when there is no rainfall. Right well it's coming to midday now it's getting really hot so <laughs> we're doing something that's it should be pretty fun we have come down to the great fish river which is the, the main river that runs through here it's probably one of the only rivers that's still flowing. I actually did a, a little whitewater rafting trip down this river um, a few years ago it was awesome we hit some awesome big rapids we probably went 20 kilometers down river within the space of an hour or two it was awesome but we're gonna enjoy the coolness of the, the river right now go for a little swim yes. should be good <laughs> you fall in. It's hard to explain just how refreshing this is after being baked in the summer sun for so long. It sort of made us feel like little kids at a water park for a while and it was a moment we savoured for a good half an hour or so. Okay, swim's over, back to the hunting. It was a bit of a reality check to actually get out the water and get back into the dry wilderness but we had a job to do and once again the good old 22 to 50 came out for some more monkey madness. The 22 to 50 does make things a bit easier, well much easier, but the monkeys aren't stupid, they know Gerard and I are not here to play hide and seek with them, it's more like seek and destroy, and when the seeking is successful, the destroying begins. Humane destroying, just to be clear. Done. Okay, so that's two monkeys in a row. One close by at about 60 meters. And then the other one is up on the horizon, right at the top there, I think. Estimate run about 180 to 200 meters. Smashed him right from the back. Unfortunately, the last one I don't think is on scope camera. Looks like our camera just died, but I think the first one I got on camera still for you guys. I'd be lying to you if I told you that it was smooth sailing. The monkeys outsmarted us most of the time, hiding in thick bush or forcing us to take quick shots. We missed a number of shots, but others, well, there's only one winner here. saw some monkeys now running across and they looks like they ran into a ditch there in the far if we're lucky enough they will come up again so I think we're gonna just hang around for a minute or two and see if we get lucky if they poke out their heads take a shot oh, did you 
took a bit too long. Yeah, the hard wall, eh? It's like they just disappear. In the grey there somewhere. Well, this is embarrassing. I just about couldn't believe it when I saw this footage. This monkey was hiding right in the open and I just couldn't see him at all. The black and grey blend in so well with the dry acacia trees, but thankfully I see him when he moves and eventually I'm able to take a shot. Just as I took the shot, the wind picked up. I think I didn't hold enough for wind there. And the 2250 is a little bit wind sensitive when the wind is coming at an awkward angle. And uh, yeah, that shot I think was just to the right of it. I normally use Hornady VMAXs in my 22250, but for this one I use a Burger Varmint bullet. And you'll see it doesn't quite have the same explosive effect. But it's dead where it stands, it's humane, and I guess that's the most important thing. We want the monkeys gone, but we certainly wouldn't wish any pain or suffering on them. Well, we were having such a good time this morning and we were so keen to get going that we kind of forgot to have breakfast. <laughs> it's, it's like kind of midday now, so not quite the right time for, for breakfast, but we're going to have a little brunch. So we're going to get the stove going here, maybe finish up some of our bacon, make some coffee, maybe eat some toasted sandwiches. Mm -hmm. But mostly just trying to, trying to get rid of all the food we've got in the freezer because it's been so hot that the freezer hasn't been able to keep our food cold. <laughs> So, yeah, the heat has been crazy. I, my impact yesterday was so hot that I, I couldn't even touch it, my black impact. And the O-ring then got so so soft that the, the O-ring, one of the O-rings in the, the, the rear block just blew out, which has never happened to me before. So, yep, it's been a good, good start to the day, but time for some food and maybe some relaxation and then we get back straight back at it. Speck in Ayers, in a lot of bike. Het klomp van jullie weet je dat ik Afrikaans en ik is Dus ik denk dat het is een goede manier om met die Afrikaans en allemaal te praten. Zo voor alle ouders die Afrikaans praat, hallo. Ik is oorspronkelijk Afrikaans. Zo wel. Ons zit een baie lekker tijd op die plaats en ons genieten het verschrikkelijk baie. En voor alle Amerikaanse mensen wat nou op die oomlik hulle gezichten trek en nie weet wat aangaan nie. Dit is wel het klink as ek my eie taal praat. There is a lot of wind now at the moment. It's blowing like mad. We're going back to the same place as where we ambushed that monkey yesterday where Matt shot that one with the 300. Um, hopefully we will get lucky again and we're going to take our chances. Let's see. The plan is to do some more varminting this afternoon, but we've still got plenty of daylight left. So we decide to head to one of the more open spots on the farm and do a little bit of target practice. My new 300 WSM needs some attention. The poor thing has been playing second fiddle to the 22-250 the whole time. And I don't like to have a favorite child, so I take her out, set her up, and prepare to take a few shots. A really, really good exercise that you can do um, if you're just out and about in trying to practice for a hunting shot is finding a random rock or something in the distance, ranging it, and trying to get a first round impact on it. Because actually, first round impact are the only thing that helps. You might be able to shoot a great group with your rifle, but if you can't get that first shot exactly where you want it, then what's the point, you know? So I'm gonna just range a random rock out there, probably 500 or 600 meters or so, and try to judge the wind and see what everything's doing and see if I can hit it first time. It's a really good experiment to do. Oh, it's right there. Let's go a little bit more. One more shot. One more shot. Time on a dull. A little bit more. There you go. Solid hit. Well, it wasn't a first round hit, but I think my ammo is really hot. I think that's the, the difference right now. 
this temperature can make a big difference if your ammo is hot and you have a powder that's a little bit temperature se sensitive your velocity will go up and shoot a little bit higher than you think it is we return to dovedale the old abandoned house where we'd ambushed a monkey the previous day and the wind is really starting to pump now so we're pretty keen to get some shelter too this time there's nobody putting out feed for the goats so we haven't got a clue whether we'll actually get something or not but hey it's worth a try right well we've come back to the abandoned farmhouse where we shot the, that monkey from the other day with the 300 hopefully they'll come back and come close to the feed get within range i've got my my impact just in case they come within 50 60 70 meters but with this wind if they're not very close i'm not going to risk the shot we'd rather take the shot with the 300 or with 20 to 50 actually 20 to 50 is probably the perfect tool for this job within 150 to 200 meters so let's do it as was the case yesterday it's pretty much a waiting game this may not be the most exciting or comfortable spot to chill in but at least we have some shelter from the elements and just as we're starting to get a little bit bored things start to happen sitting right here how can me and you not see this monkey was sitting right here Matt across the road huh? it takes probably another half an hour or so for another monkey to appear I won't lie it was a pretty boring wait but it was all worth it in the end <laughs> oh, smash that one. I just see a little bit of a spatter going there and yo, he went hard down to the floor. Well, glad we got something. We waited a while, but eventually plan paid off. So Monkey it. down, it popped out quite nicely. <laughs> <laughs> 22 to 50 strikes again. Awesome guy. But Real it's awesome. about 5 p.m. now. We're probably going to go shower settle down have an early night and put some meat on the fire i think we might actually make a fire indoors and yeah, no, indoors. it's, it's really very windy indoors. outside yeah. so we do something indoors and then it's the dussies tomorrow so let's get back and start our evening off Right guys, so it's just gone 6 p.m. Uh, just arrived back at the camp. We're gonna start preparing for supper, which had a nice shower, which has been pretty refreshing. <laughs> and it's a beautiful evening. It's, it's nice and cool, not as hot as, as yesterday. Um, we could actually be outside. It'd be nice to have a fire outside, but I think just for a change, we'll be inside. We've got some two nice T-bone steaks for dinner tonight, so more meat. Did you think we forgot the garlic bread last night? <laughs> I was wondering why, why you didn't cook it, but... Do you think we'll be fine? Yeah. Think so? I hope so. Well, if we're sick in the morning, then we know. It was really nice to be indoors for a change. The wind was howling outside, but thankfully we have a big fireplace to cook over inside the camp lounge. By the way, the Oxwagon camp is open to bookings for accommodation. The link is in the video description below. And even better news is that the farmer is considering opening up the farm to air gun hunters as well as a way to bring in extra revenue during times of drought like this. So if you'd like to do some dassy, monkey, ground squirrel and baboon hunting over here, let me know in the comment section. It'll be really cool to get that going in the future. So yeah, usually people don't do a lot of cooking in their fireplaces. I think most generally people use their fireplaces to keep themselves warm. But we're in South Africa, 
if there's a fireplace and there's a fire and it can make some coals, they usually meet in the same place as well. So we do brise. Well, the series is, well, this section of the series is kind of coming to an end for now. Um, we are going to film a video tomorrow, but you're not going to see that video for a good few months because we're filming uh, something very secret that we can only launch in a few months time. So keep an eye out for that. But for those who have watched the past few episodes here in our 2019 Oxwagon Diaries edition, thank you so much. Um, we're going to finish up with the steaks and probably fall asleep straight afterwards because as I say in Afrikaans, mouth is full, or is too, which means stomach's full, eyes closed. <laughs> If you would like to see the extended version of this video and other extra content like old uploads that YouTube took down or early releases of upcoming episodes, head over to airgun101.com. You'll be able to find many other airgun content creators on the site and a safe place where we can build a community and help each other out. It's a real practical way of supporting content creators like myself without paying a cent as the sponsors of the website help contribute towards the running costs of my channel. Alternatively, you can find me on other social media platforms, on my vlog channel and on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.